Craig, whatever his name is, he said something. Well, hello, folks. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Examining Smithics Irish Ale. Now, uh, we have a bunch of people here, uh, not as many as we always do, but, uh, you know, we have myself from the south central part of the country, Louisiana. We have Charles and John from uh, Indiana in the north. We have uh, Jonathan Walker. We have Walker from uh, uh, the, the upper south, Virginia, and someone with him. <laughs> and we have... And he thanks everybody. It's nice to meet you, my friend. And we have uh, Eric and Nate Kay from the Northeast, Massachusetts. Hello, everybody. Not Massachusetts, as some people say. Uh, I'd like them to look at that word more carefully. All right. <laughs> Just like it's not Louisiana, it's Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, now, Jonathan Walker, who is your friend with you? His name is Chris Moen. He's from Northern Virginia. Hello, Chris. Hey. Hey, Chris. How you doing, Chris? How you doing, Chris? Chris, there's only one real rule to be on this. Do you like to drink beer and talk about it? Yeah, I love that. Good, then you're welcome. All right, um, well, look at this thick. Is this the biggest amount of foam you ever saw on a beer in your life? Look at this. Going pretty strong. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, guess what one of my comments was today on one of my videos. Why don't you learn how to pour beer right? I said, oh, no, not again. <laughs> Good. Eat their own on that subject. Tilting the glass is a way. However, it is not the way. There's there more no, than one way to skin a cat. Right. You know, uh, if I'm at a bar and they're pouring it out of a draft, yep. a cask, yeah, I want them to tilt the glass because I don't want to pay $5 for a half a cup of foam. But this can will always be 14. <laughs> this can will always be 14.9 ounces. I don't care. If I dribble it out or if I pour it all at once. Uh, who wants to give us a little history of Smithics? And that's the way they say it on their website, Smithics. There's, There's a the pub in downtown Richmond called Penny Lane. Figured it out. Wait, hold on a second. Paul from Texas. Now we're going out west. I figured it out. I figured it out. Good. We're not dumb out here in Texas. We're smart. <laughs> <laughs> not like dumb. Hey, um, although Paul is originally from Louisiana, I might add. Yeah, we're not dumb from Louisiana. We're smart. Hey, we want respect. All right, uh, hey, well, uh, who's, who's going to, yeah, all right. Who, who's going to give us a history of this beer? It's Irish. Irish. There you could go. There is a, yeah. if you go on Smithick's website, there is a lengthy, lengthy, lengthy history on this beer. You could talk about this beer for ages. Oh, yeah, it's really interesting. They, they don't yeah. give a lot about the ingredients. They just talk about how they um, how they uh, add hops later in the boil to give it more, uh, what do they say, aromatics. Yes. The and, beer is named after John Smithick. Right, who established the company in 1710. So this beer... It's been around for 304 years, and that's pretty impressive. So the beer is older than the United States of America, and that's saying something. And um, uh, now, do y'all know? You know, this was a company-owned brewery. And it kind of went downhill, and then it would get strong again, and it went downhill again. And then in the 60s, it started kind of going downhill, and they even tried to rename the beer. Remember what they renamed it? Mm mm. They called it Time. Time. T I M E time, huh? But time didn't really work, and then they said, "Oh well, we'll just go like back to the, we'll go back to the name Smithix." And then they they just sold out to Guinness in 1964, and right. because you know they just couldn't handle the competition. This is a thick foamy head. I mean, look at this beautiful. Right. Head. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. Who wants to give us a? I mean, y'all all getting the same appearance? Yeah. yeah. Look, give me a chance. All right. Oh, and here's Craig. Now, listen, y'all. We've got Craig joining us from Louisiana. Look at that beautiful Acadiana flag. Um, Craig, I want to welcome you. 
Craig has been trying to join us for weeks, but he's he's he has to work. Of course, we have to work. Work is more important than drinking beer. And uh, but he is here tonight. <laughs> I was with we really appreciate it, Craig. Welcome. Thousand people viewed it. Probably. Yeah. Can you hear us, Craig? Yeah. Yeah, this is 2300. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, the head has died down uh, a lot. I'm glad somebody rang that. Um, I have no head. Look at all the foam I've got there. Look at this. But I poured it out of a can. Right. Out of a bottle. I've still got quite a bit on mine, really. Hey, um. It smells really good. I want I want Jonathan since he's new with us, and then I'm gonna to talk to Craig. I want Jonathan to give us a rundown of the aroma. All right. You know what you think about it. This is not some kind of a scientific thing, but just what do you think about it? I it's know it's bready, uh, brown, brown red, uh, caramel. I mean, kind of your typical dark beer smell, like like your Vienna Lager. Has almost kind of a sour smell to it. Sour. Yeah. Very very faint, maybe. I like what he said, Vienna Lager. You know, Vienna Lager sometimes has that tannic, like tea leaves. Type. Yeah. I find it's got a real good hop presence. Yeah. But it's not, you know, obviously it's not a India pale ale. It's just an Irish ale, but it does have that a little bit. Um, what do you think, um, Craig? My hair sticking out. No. It looks like it is. Or it looks like it is. <clears throat> Craig. Craig. Well, he He's might be. Having, we can't hear him. Yeah, he might be having some audio issues, I'm afraid. And that does happen on the internet. Um, but we need, we need to make a, you need to make a sign that says Craig, or like the person's name. Can you hear me? Like a whiteboard. Craig, if you can hear me, hold up your hands. Uh, hear us. All right, but we can't hear you, unfortunately. <laughs> His audio is off. See the sign or the button? You might have to, Craig, you might have to. At the top of the screen, Craig, there might be a, a microphone button you need to hit. Yeah, Yeah, it's right up, up the top of the screen. Just move the mouse. Hey, John, you remember a couple of times you had to reboot? Yeah, I've had to a couple of times. Especially when you're on, like, a mobile device, it can really be hell. Um Y'all, y'all pick up that um breadiness and that um. Yeah, what I what I pick bread, up is, is a bready kind of a of a. Mm -hmm. And and there's definitely a t um I'm not sure what exactly, but there's definitely some kind of a dark fruit aroma. In that might maybe that's from the yeast. Mm -hmm. in the beer. Like, it sounds like you're. Hold on a second. Somebody's talking in the background. It's the, your mic is picking it up real strong, man. Sorry. There's a fruity note. Maybe that's from the yeast is what I was trying to say. Yeah, I'm picking up fruitiness. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, Eric. Because it's almost like, you know, when you drink those uh, wheat beers and the yeast gives it that banana? Yeah. Uh, it's got some kind of thing going uh, uh, like that, but it's not like overt. It's like covert. It's overly it, – I mean, I mean, the taste – I mean, the taste. The smell is – is predominantly just a roasty malt. Yeah, I think that's what you're tasting. You're tasting the malt, I think, more than you are the yeast in it. You mean smelling? Yeah. What do you think, Charles? I agree. I need mean, a little bit of caramel, a little grassy. Uh, but like you guys said, you can get that. You definitely, you can definitely get a little bit of the fruity in the yeast. Okay. Now, Craig, if you, if you have trouble talking, you could type stuff. You know how you can type on the chat, and then we could – you could like communicate that way to us. Now you said fruity from the yeast a little bit, Charles. Yeah, I think it. I kind of I'm, I'm picking up the same thing. I think you guys are. Oh. Um, you get that from the yeast. Yeah, I agree with everybody said. I I, I kind of get that um, that fruitiness, that kind of Belgian ale ish aspect to it. Ah, but none of that is really in your face, is it? No, no. it's very pleasant smelling. And the taste is very pleasant too. You get it's some very dark, dark, very pretty colors, uh, brownish, dark amber. I mean, it's uh, really pretty. Oh boy, no I doubt. Agree. I kind of agree a little bit with what uh, what Eric said. It's almost you're almost getting that weedy type taste out of this beer. Yep. 
And Jay, the last time I smelled it, I get that I got that tea smell too that you talked about. Yeah, it's like tannin. It's like tannins. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let's get into the flavor, man. I love drinking this stuff. Tea. Yeah. As you're drinking it, I, I seem to I seem to think that that the the follows the nose very very well. The nose is almost exactly to a T how the beer tastes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it has a little now. Someone and I don't remember who someone said sourness. It has a little sourness, but yeah. it's not what you would call a sour beer. And it's got a. I would think the IBUs on this must be what around uh, twenty. Ten. Ten. It may be uh, fifteen. Okay, fifteen. I I'm gonna say between ten and fifteen. I don't think it's ten. I don't think it's fifteen. Okay, okay, fifteen, fourteen. <laughs> Two point five. Yeah, but anyway, it's relatively low bitterness, right? There is a distinctively um, sweetness to the to the malt as well. I'm loving the sweetness. Yeah, man, I'll tell you what. Now, you know, this is a new label design. Uh, it came out with this red can in early 2014. You know, the old design was that castle. I mean, it still has a castle on it. Remember, it was a castle, and it had the actual bricks and everything? Yeah. And it was kind of cool looking, I thought. But then, I guess it was sort of busy looking, so they decided. You know, if you notice, Guinness revamped all their uh, 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 labels. All of them. Um, Harp, um, Smith, everything. I, I don't know why they just did it. Um Guinness beer. Yeah. This beer, this beer is mass produced, but it is from Ireland. You know, it's not made in Canada. Somebody was remarking about that on text. This is from du from Dublin, Ireland. Dublin. 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 Uh, it's owned by Diageo, and Diageo is a huge company, and they they own so many liquor, wine, and beer brands. Liquor like Johnny Walker. Wine. Yeah. <laughs> that's his, that's yeah. His name is Johnny Walker. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, that's right, John. Yeah. Well, that's, they that's own you, John. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, the mouthfeel. Now, John Sharon is real good on mouthfeel. Uh, what are you picking up on that, man? I'm gonna put it as a as a moderately medium mouthfeel. Uh, yeah. Uh huh. Moderate. I think it's moderately medium. I mean, it's it's a it's a good medium tasting beer with mouthfeel, but it's no way heavy. No, no. I mean, I was sitting there trying to look up, well, you know, what what the ABVs are on it, and it doesn't say nowhere on it. So four and a half percent. Four and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it says it right on the back of the bottle. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Yep. Right here on the very bottom line on the back. Four point five. That yeah. seems about right. Yeah. It is like. Ultra drinkable, man. I think yeah. it's about a light. It's light to medium, but it's closer to the light side. It's not like a middle light. I, I, I agree with that. Light to medium. I think it's a little thin, and uh, I think the roasted barley gets you in the back of the tongue a little bit. Oh yeah. I was gonna say that. I I think the finish of the beer. I think the beer finishes a lot stronger than its initial taste. To me, you get a good, you get a good earthy type bitterness. It's not really. There's not really a hot bitterness, but you do get like this earthy kind of a bitterness, and you seem to get a little bit of a coffee taste before the beer completely dries out. Maybe that's just me, but that's kind of what I get. I agree with you, and I think it has residual flavors that you have to – you wouldn't appreciate if you were just gulping it. If you're sipping on it and you're letting it warm a little bit, you're going to pick those things up. You may have to you may have to pull to get the coffee, but there is a little bit in there in the finish. I think the the mouth feels bigger than than it going down. I think so. I think it kind of loses it the farther down it goes, but I can I can get that little bit of hint of uh, coffee. I think. And it kind of reminds me in, in some aspects since we did it yesterday. It reminds me in some aspects of an Oktoberfest beer as well. Just in that roasted malty kind of flavor, All right. kind of a little bit of that fruity. As well. But I, I find it's less cloying than Oktoberfest beers. Like, it's less... Not as sweet. Yeah. Those... those I don't know if I'd want to just gulp Oktoberfest <laughs> beers so much. Now, now Craig. <laughs> Craig, if you agree with what we're saying, give me a thumbs up. If you don't agree, give me a thumbs down. All right. Now, I also want to ask Craig. Okay, so he can hear us. Do you, do you like the beer? <laughs> 
Oh, he's, his, uh, he's, oh, he likes it. He likes looks it. Looks like he's asleep. Is he asleep? <laughs> he's not asleep. He's right awake. <clears throat> Eric says, talk to us here, my man. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what Ray Beer and Beer Advocate says about it. I don't remember. But I can't I get on Beer Advocate right now. I don't see why people would rip on this beer. Personally, I like it. I don't see anything wrong with it. If this beer has problems, I don't know what they are. Now, y'all can say what y'all want and start talking, but my opinion is I think it's good, man. Oh, Craig, I sent a message. What is he saying? <laughs> I sent a message. Okay. Rape Beer says this is an English-style ale, and overall for English ales, it gets a 27. For the style, Overall as a beer, for the style, it gets a 26 out of mine, which I think it is. Pretty oh. piss poor. Yeah, right, right, beer, right beer gives it a 44. And overall, yeah. a 54 for style. That's pretty bad. I don't think it deserves quite that. I would give it, wow. out of a 5, I would give it at least a, there's There's no reason giving it a 4 out of 5 to me. It's got really good, solid flavors. It's really easy to drink. It finishes excellent, and it would go good with so many different kinds of foods on the grill. I'll tell you this, the beer's been around since 1710. You gotta give it a little tough pie. Meat meat hey, this would go great with a meat pie. There's some bangers and mash. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I mean this beer is like the ultimate barred beer. People in Ireland drinking this. Hey, it's a, uh, what do we call it? A, a pub beer. Pub beer. Yeah, I mean, for real. How could you say this beer is bad? I mean, everybody has opinions. I'm not saying people can't say what they want. If somebody says they hate it, that's cool. But I cannot. I, I I can't put my head around. I can't see how anybody could hate this thing, man. I could drink this stuff like water. I I could be a serious addict <laughs> of this. Beer. I mean, I'm not. But I'm. You know what I'm saying? I could just drink Absolutely. this stuff all day. Put it down you know, the hatch. You know, for the overall overall taste, the overall appearance. I mean, it's got good lacing to it. I mean, it pours good. It's got a good head. I don't know how you can go wrong with a beer like this. I mean. No, I mean aromatic aroma on this, and it's just an overall good beer. I mean, yeah, my opinion is one hundred percent positive, and 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 I guess that's being bolstered by the fact that I was able to buy those eight packs for four dollars and ninety nine cents, and that's why I bought. I think I bought half that pallet. They had seventy two cases that came in. Oh, I'm sorry, 78 cases. But, I mean, what a deal, man. Okay. But, obviously, you're going to pay more for it normally. But I think it's worth the price. I mean, and whether it's better at a can or bottle, I don't think it's – oh, yeah, Eric says it's a good leaf-raking beer. I don't think I don't think it makes a difference, can or bottle. And I bet it's – awesome. Paul, you're big into draft beer like we all are. What do you think – how do you think it would be on draft? Oh, yeah. It'd be good. I mean, uh, I don't. I've never had a beer on draft that I really didn't like. No, but, me, neither. me neither. But uh, put on the I, night. This I give this you know like a B plus A minus kind of range, uh, as it is. So that overall. Mm-hmm. Okay. I Not think the worst. Style. The worst I could say about it is is that it's delicious. But that's me. And I don't. Work, I don't work for Smithix or Diageo. What? I'm sorry. What? That, that's all right. I don't know. We we maybe mentioned this in in past videos and stuff where where if you you can go to a you can go to a beer store and buy a really expensive or sort of an exotic kind of a beer. You buy a big old bomber of it of stuff that you may not know going into it, spending say ten, eleven, twelve dollars on a beer that you're gonna actually really like and enjoy that beer. But if you buy something like Smithix, you probably have a good idea of what it's going to be like and that you know that you're spending your money on at least a product that you're not going to be overall disappointed in. No, no, no way. You can go out there and spend a whole lot more money on one beer that's not any good, or you can spend $7 on a six-pack of real good beer. And I would not say that there's anything wrong with both both sides of that, of that equation, but, you know, some people... When they don't want to spend a whole bunch of money like that, they want to, you know, watch a video like this and have a educated uh, opinion before they go into buying. Uh, beer. Right, you know anybody else have any? Anybody else have any last comments about this? And then I hey. want. Okay. How much did each person pay for the beer? Like, how much was it for a six pack, and or how much did you pay for your individual bottle? <clears throat> it was eight ninety nine here. Or no, six I, pack. I give seven ninety nine for a six pack. 
I, 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 I bought the single bottle or two single bottles, and that was four dollars. But I could have paid nine dollars for six. Yeah. Wow. I paid four ninety nine. I paid four ninety nine for an eight pack, but that was a very unusual situation. That will never happen again. Craig says I like it. I'm yeah, enjoying you, it. A can was given to me. Yeah. You keep bragging. Yeah. Eight ninety nine for a six pack at my local store. Hey Craig. The best kind free. <laughs> hey, the best fair, kind of old and free. wait a minute. To be fair, it's true. I gave Craig a Guinness draft. Uh, um, uh, um, Guinness Black Lager, the Smithics, and the Smithics Pale Ale. But he brought me a bunch of Cigar City beers from Florida, okay? <laughs> that was a hell of a trade. I took that trade in. <laughs> Damn right. Excuse me. You're doggone right because it was awesome. Those cigar I, don't think, I don't think Cigar City knows how to make a bad beer. I'm going to tell you that right now. But this <laughs> one's very exceptional. Oh. And it's mass produced. And so I don't even care. Hey, well, Ron. you know, I, I don't know if you could call it, you know, there, there's a lot of other quote-unquote craft beers that, that, there's a lot of beers being mass-produced now. Oh, that's the main guy, right? right, that are craft beers. Look at Sierra Nevada and uh, Samuel Adams, for instance. Uh, uh, like, we talk, like we were talking last night, take, take Harpoon, UFO, and some of those others also like that, that, that are mass craft beers. Right now, Nate was asking about the uh, bobble thing. Now, what that is, Nate? That's a that's a, a nitro widget, and they put that in Guinness to give it a draft feeling. Like if you went to a, a bar and got it on draft, and it you know, and it made that uh, nitrous uh, creamy head. But no, this beer does not have a nitro nitro widget in it. No, it does not. But some do. Boddington's, and actually, Boddington's is the company that invented the nitro widget in 1992. Bo Boddington's is great. I love Boddington's. Oh, I could drink that stuff like. <laughs> yeah. like uh, I don't know if you have it up there, but uh, Old Chub Nitro. Yep. Wow. I never had the Nitro. I had the Old Chub. I, 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 was like, I was obsessed with that stuff. Yeah. Um. Well, any final words? My final word is: if you're looking to try an Irish beer, this would be a good. One to start with, you're and for another red ale, I would, and you'll probably never see the one I'm about to mention, but another good Irish red ale, to me, is Murphy's uh, red ale, but you, when you, when would you ever see it? I don't even know if they still make Murphy's oh, red ale. Yeah, I, I still don't make it. Hmm? It was even, the Murphy's red ale is more expensive than this. Yeah, it's too expensive. That's probably why people don't buy it. Right. I don't guess I've ever seen the Murphy's Red Ale. I see a lot of Murphy's around, but I've never seen the Red Ale around here. John, it comes in a really weird shaped bottle. Uh, a lot of people rip on it, but I think they're ripping on it because they just don't like Red Ales, you know. But um, it, it's, to me, dynamite. And uh, this one is dynamite. Okay, keep going. I'm going to shut up. But uh, I, th I think overall, this is, this is a good beer. I mean, if it's, you know, and, and this is what I call one legacy type beers, I guess. One's been around for a long time and we hope it never goes away. It doesn't feel like a legacy beer because it ain't something that our grandfathers drank. Yeah, but it's something a lot of people in Ireland grandfathers drank. My, my, uh, my great great grandparents, were, some of them were actually born in Ireland. They probably drank that. Oh, well, they over here. Well, this, is, this is better stuff than the cans or something. No doubt. Well, let's go down the line. Charles? Uh, I'd give it about a C minus, C plus, somewhere in the C range. I'm, it's good. I'll drink it, you know, for what it is. It's not my, it's not my taste, not my style. C minus. Okay, you'll never be in this panel again. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I finished, finished it. <laughs> we appreciate it, but... um. We we don't tolerate any any dissension. Um, <laughs> now Craig said it's a democracy, man. You can't you can't dissent. That's right. Well, <laughs> Craig said uh, he would buy it. Um, so I'm glad, Craig. Craig, have you had it before? Or is this the first time? He's typing currently, waiting for a response. First time. He put his hand up. First time. He said, "I am a South Louisiana Cajun." Melanson. <laughs> yes, I, and I'm a Terrio. 
And but Paul is not a Cajun because the Oberts came straight from France. Oh well. I don't associate with the Cajun types. He's a Creole. Well, excuse me, you. All right, now Eric. I'm a French. I'm a Frenchman that hates everybody. Boy. Um, I, I think I mentioned this earlier in the beer advocate style rating. I would definitely give it a four out of five. There's no reason that I can really not finish the beer and not hate the beer. It's got really good, solid, um, multi flavors, fruity flavors. The finish is excellent. And if there's a fault in the beer, somebody tell me, please. Now. Hear from me, John. Me? Oh. I, uh, I, I'm going to agree with Eric. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Charles, you're not invited down after a while. <laughs> but uh, I, I think overall this this is a, a fantastic beer. There, there's, I, I mean, I'm a fan of kind of the Red Ale type beers, and I've, I've had this numerous times, and there will be numerous times I'll have it again. And I think this is one of those good beers that I've said before that it, 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 if all you've ever drank was your adjunct lagers like Miller Lite, Bud Light, or some of these other beers, this would be a good transition beer to start over on, and uh, overall, I give it I give it some high scores, and uh, I'll have more of it. Excellent, Jonathan Walker and his friend. Uh, what's your friend's name again? I apologize. Chris. 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 Okay. What do y'all say about it? Okay. Well, beer overall, I give it a B. It's wonderful. It, you can you can have it anywhere. It's just great. Summertime, wintertime. As far as the style, I give it an A. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. All right. You know, I used to not yeah, like. Yeah. I used to not like red ales, but it was my problem, not the ales' problem. Now I've 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 I've, I've grown up a little bit. Okay. Um, I mean, if I had to choose this or Yingling, this by far. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, no hey, doubt. Eric, are you from, Eric? Are you from Massachusetts, right? Yes. You have a little Irish in you. Um. Itty bitty teeny weeny. I have a uh, Swiss and German primarily. Oh, aren't you a mutt? Oh no no no. <laughs> He's too chronic. He's too chronic. Nate. Yeah. All right. So my last word on this. I just, I think I'm gonna uh, stay consistent around a B uh, for this. And uh, I mean, I, I generally I agree with everybody. Else, what everybody else has been saying about it. It's a very drinkable beer. Uh, it's not bad. Um, I'll tell you, there's just there's weird times when I drink this. So like the first first sip I had, um, because I wasn't letting it go back all the way to the back part of my tongue there, I wasn't getting all the flavor. So it almost tasted like seltzer water for a second there. Um, but you know, uh, as far as you know, it's really really unique. I think, like especially now that it's it's brewed by Guinness. Uh, like I said before, the Guinness Stout that we get in America is brewed in Canada, and this is definitely not. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, straight from Ireland. Well, that's good. I'm glad you like it, and Paul is going to wrap it up. I'm going to say I like it. Um, it's not my favorite beer of all time. That's why I say it's about a B to B plus, right? B plus range, I'd say. Uh, very good. I have it again, and uh, I like it. So in other words, no complaints. No I, I would I would like to go back on a comment that uh, that uh, the other John made there. Uh, I would take Yangling over this, but I like this, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, all right, other John. I, I never even got to a good line. Nice beer. Oh yeah, come on, come on Chris. I mean, I would give it a B. I mean, I I'm, I think my three favorite kinds of beers, like styles, are probably stouts. And a lot of people laugh when I say this, but fruity wheat ales and then uh, IPAs. So, I mean, like, red ales, like, I'll, I'll drink about almost any kind of beer except for some of the really nasty malt liquor that's out there. But, I mean, one thing that I've noticed is, and this Whoa. is kind of a comparison. Nasty malt liquors. <laughs> I'll drink cold coffee. But, yeah, here, the whole... Get back to my original argument here. What I've noticed about European beers compared to American beers is their mass-produced beers, I think, are a whole lot better than our mass-produced beers. Flavorful. They're a lot oh, more yeah. and nicer. The thing that I that 
they really, they're a disadvantage that they have is that they don't have the craps that we have here, at least not that I know of. Like, we have so much variety with craft breweries and microbreweries that they don't have. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if I'm getting off topic here, but I mean, yeah, I would say this is a nice drinking beer for a mass-produced beer. I could drink this, and I, I give it a B. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're cool with that. Well, I didn't rate mine because um, I don't really rate them on these examinations. I just talk about it, but I mean, I'm sitting there bragging on it, so it's pretty obvious when I think about it. Um, I think we're going to get off air and we're going to talk hey. about what to do next. Um, okay. I have some ideas, but um, anyway, I, boy, what a big panel. At first it was small, now it's really big, so um, I appreciate everybody joining, and um, so let's see what comes up next. What in the world? Let's see what comes up next week for an exciting beer examination. What is this? A big poster? Yeah, I got this at a yard sale. Look at this thing. It has like every, every beer I can imagine on here. Look at that. Yeah. Shouldn't it come through? I see Rolling Rock. Hold on. Still. I think I see Styro Promen. There's uh, the Fuller's, Guinness, Duvel. Um, you need a poster like that. Well, um, oh, and uh, uh, Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. Well, that puts an idea. Yeah, uh, Corona, Carlsberg, you name it. Are we uh, off air now? Are we live? Oh, we're about to go off air. All right, let's okay, go off air before anybody says anything untoward. Uh, All right, thank you for watching this video production. Go Beans! Orioles! Good luck to the best team. Are we off the air? No. Bye. What's going on?